You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 176. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm Amy Porterfield, and I cannot wait to dive into this topic today because it's all about podcasting. But in true Amy Porterfield fashion, I guess, I'm going into the step-by-step, here's my project plan. If you've ever thought about podcasting or if you're podcasting now and you're curious as to my entire process, that's what this episode is all about. A few weeks ago, I posted a question on Instagram and I asked, what do you want to see more of on my podcast? And the answers were so good. So many great ideas. I loved reading all of your thoughts and insights and your wants and needs around online marketing. And I'm just so glad I posted that. Now, a few of those requests were around my podcast. The funny thing is, I've done a few shows about podcasting before, but I've never given you a complete backstage pass to the intricacies of how the show comes together every single week, how I plan it out step by step, how I use my team, what tools I use. I mean, from concept to recording to the actual writing of the show notes and the email, it's all included in this podcast episode. Honestly, I don't know what took me so long. I mean, I could talk about my podcast planning process all day long and the freebie. Oh, the freebie. It is so dang good. I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. The freebie for this episode is a complete project plan of our process ready for you to use at any time. Go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 176 download. It will take you right to the opt-in page to get the freebie. Or if you're on our show notes at amyporterfield.com forward slash 176, just scroll on down and you'll see the opportunity to grab the freebie once you opt in. So it's there waiting for you right now. And it is oh so good. So this show combines some of my favorite things, podcasting, systems, and working with my team. I'll work through our process category by category, highlighting the key players and milestones along the way. And if you get tripped up at any time during the episode, just refer back to today's freebie. Before I jump in, a few things to keep in mind. Some of these steps may feel more advanced, and that's okay. I'll call out the essential pieces in the freebie. So when you get the project plan, when you download it, I'll call out the pieces that you don't wanna skip no matter if you're just starting out or you've been at it for a while. But if I don't call it out as an essential, it's something you can just work toward. I mean, remember, I've been podcasting for a few years now. And so my process today looks very different than my process in the early years where I just did the essentials. I'm all about keeping it simple, baby steps, moving into more advanced strategies when you're ready. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is that even if you're not doing a podcast or planning a podcast just yet, I think this episode is going to provide a ton of value about the entire content creation process. So if you're doing a video blog, a written blog, a live show, stay with me because I think you could take some of these steps and strategies into your own model, even if you're not doing a podcast. The last thing I'll say before I jump in is that I'm a planner. This is just who I am by nature. So if you don't like a lot of planning, if you like to work off the cuff and wing it, you will hate this episode. So this one might be one that you need to skip. But for all my planners, for everyone who's wanted to know my process, and if you just like a behind the scenes view, then you, my friend, are in the right place. Let's get to it. First, I want to talk to you about roles, because as I go through the tasks, you're going to hear me talk names, people on my team. So remember that, again, I've been doing this for a while, so I have a full team to help me. It's still a very small team. I always say I have a small but mighty team, and I always want to keep it that way. But I do have a team. So if you're just starting out and it's just you, 
pay attention in the freebie when I call out the essentials, because that's what you're going to focus on first. As you start to make more money in your business, as your podcast becomes more popular and you're starting to see it really make an impact with your audience, then I would think about bringing on some team members to help you. Ideally, I would love for you to at least have a virtual assistant helping you with some of these pieces. Your podcast will be better if you don't insist that it's just you. I don't want you to be a one man or a one woman show. I'd like you to consider at least bringing in a VA for a few hours a week and ease into leveraging some of these pieces. So for me, here's what the roles look like. In terms of podcast management, that's Chloe, my project manager, and she oversees the podcast in terms of the process and the due dates, and she manages all the SOPs and the entire system inside of Asana in a project plan, which looks very similar to the freebie that you're going to be getting for this episode. And then the talented Lindsay, who many of you know because she is my community manager inside of all three of my paid Facebook groups, Lindsay actually does the tasks that are needed to get it done. So Lindsay runs all things podcasts, meaning working with the designers, posting the final podcast, posting and formatting the show notes. Lindsay essentially has her hands on everything before it goes live. And then we have a content writer. So I have a writer who writes the emails, the show notes, and the freebies, and anything beyond that. And then the last thing I have that most people won't have is I have a content developer. And that is Gina, who I've talked about before. She worked with me at Tony Robbins. And right now we're batching, which I'll talk about in a moment. So that means Gina and I come together and we have a three to four hour meeting where we hash out a bunch of ideas. We go over the surveys. We go over your Instagram posts of your ideas for my podcast. And we go over all that together. Then we start to formulate our ideas for podcast episodes. Then Gina goes off and she puts together outlines for me. I don't read a script during my podcast, but I do have a really detailed outline based on the conversations Gina and I have. And then when we come back together, we look over the outlines. I ask her any questions. I kind of put my own touch on things. And then I go into the recording studio. So having Gina on my team to help me with the content and the outlines has been incredible. I mean, I always say that I create all of my own content and I truly do, but for the podcast, I needed a little extra help coming up with a new, really good idea every single week and then fleshing it out because you guys know I like my podcast to be mini trainings. So I needed to bring in a sidekick for that. And Gina has been the perfect person for the job. So looking at my roles, you likely, if you're just starting out, don't have a project manager, hopefully you're thinking about having somebody do the tasks for you, which could be a virtual assistant or a coordinator on your team, or maybe you split the tasks so you're not doing all of them yourself. And you may be the writer if you're bootstrapping right now. I know I wrote all my show notes and my emails and all that good stuff for a while until I could afford to have somebody help me do so. So again, I don't expect for you to have this big of a team for your podcast. So you're just going to ease into things and you might not want to do all the things I do for my podcast, but it's kind of fun to go behind the scenes with somebody to see what they do, especially because you all know my podcast is very successful. So what I'm doing definitely works. So that's why I thought I'd take you behind the scenes. Okay. So on to the steps. Step one is to develop the content. So first, what we do is we select a topic. I come up with the episode's theme based on a number of criteria. Like I told you, we look at surveys. We ask my audience what they want. We see what's trending on social media and online marketing. We also think about where my audience is right now. What do they need to be educated on? And I also look at my own experiences and new things that I've been learning, new things I've been testing out in my business. And then I think, would my audience care? I'm always asking that question. So once I decide on the topic, I ask myself, is this me teaching it or should I bring on a guest? You all know that I don't do a lot of guests on this podcast. I do a lot of solo shows. However, if the guest is going to kick butt, be really, really good and spend some time on putting together some great content, then by all means, I'd love to have a guest on. I got to give a shout out to Zach Spuckler. Zach Spuckler and I did a podcast together, and I think that was my most 
favorite experience because we went back and forth. Usually Gina does it, but for some reason it was me and Zach. So I got to experience it where we came up with the questions together and we detailed out exactly how he was going to answer them and in what detail. And he thought of examples and stories. So before we even went into the interview, we had a really good fleshed out outline. Now, typically that doesn't happen with all of my guests, but I love when they're game and they're like, for sure, I'll do it. And the conversation is still conversational. I mean, we can go off it. It's not a script. It's just an outline. So we don't have to stick with it. But I love being prepared because I don't want to waste any minute of your time. Funny enough, Zach Spuckler's episode was one of my most popular. It's in the top five most downloaded. I will link to it below. It's all about putting together a five-day challenge for list building and sales. It was really, really good. But Shout out to Zach. A lot of my other guests have been incredibly helpful in preparing as well, but that was a special episode with Zach because I got to a pitch and catch with him. Okay, from there, we move into outlining the episode. And I'll break this up into A and B, depending on if it's me teaching or if I have a guest. So if it's a solo mini training, once the topic is decided, I'll outline the episode, organize it into three areas, my intro, the core content, and my close. Now, you know that I have Gina do that part for me. It's not me. But if you are a smaller team than I am, then maybe you are outlining it. And I say don't spend more than 30 minutes to an hour doing this, but this is really going to help you once you turn on the mic. I also keep in mind that if I have a sponsor for that particular episode, I need to find a space to talk about the sponsor in the intro and in the outro. And if I haven't done so already, I have to record the promo spot for the sponsor. So usually I make sure I make note of that in the outline. And then If we go on to example B, which is I'm actually interviewing somebody, we take some time for a pre-interview. So Gina will actually do some research on the guest, come up with a series of questions based on the overall theme of our episode, and then when needed, we'll actually get on a call with the guest. It's not a really long call. It's not laborious or anything like that. But Gina wants to get input from the guest, so it's not just us trying to think of questions to come up with, but we want to make sure that the guest feels really supported, they're talking about the stuff they love to talk about, and they're ready for some examples and stories based on the questions we're going to ask. Now, I can tell you that if I listen to all of the interviews on my podcast from the very beginning until now, one thing I know for sure is I've gotten better at interviewing. It's not something I'm totally comfortable with me being the preparer I am. Gosh, I sound so controlling, right? But I definitely get a little bit nervous on podcasts, especially if it's a really big name or someone I'm enamored with, which happens a lot. And the second thing I'll tell you is that now that we have more of a process, Jeannie gets on the phone with the person, she goes back and forth, she sends them questions in advance. That has really contributed to better interviews. So if I were to listen to all of my episodes, I know precisely which ones we had an outline for and which ones we didn't because the stories are richer. The examples are better. The guest feels more relaxed because they know what's to come. What's to come? I don't know. They know what is going to come. That sounded a little weird. And so I just love that they are totally supported in the process. So something just kind of behind the scenes there around how I view interviews. So I had mentioned that we started to batch and I wanted to kind of let you in on what that looks like because it's a big deal to me. I've always struggled with batching my podcast and I've always struggled with getting ahead of the curve. So as much as I love producing the podcast, it's something that always feels forced at a certain time. Like we get to a point that we're like, oh my gosh, we don't have an episode for next week. And then we get caught up for a while and we're like one month in advance. And then we easily get into, oh my gosh, we don't have an episode for next week. So this is one area that we've struggled. So I was listening to Michael Hyatt's free to focus program. I absolutely love it. Recommend it. I talk about it a lot now because it's incredible. And while I was listening to it, he talked about batching. 
And of course, we all know about batching. I've heard it a million times, but for some reason, the way he explained it, and I know he's a podcaster and I know he's a planner, I thought, if Michael can do this, I just know I can do it as well. So I went back to Chloe and I said, I want to make a batch. I want to do six episodes at a time. I think Michael does like 10 to 12 or 14 or something ridiculously crazy like that in one day. I can't do that, but I can do six at a time and maybe ease into doing more down the road. So we are finally batching and I want you to know kind of what it looks like. So we do one meeting where Gina and I come up with all the topics. A week later, she comes back to the table. We have another meeting, just the two of us in person. I love that she lives close. So we actually go to my co-working space. We rent out a little conference room and we hash out the outlines. I read them along with her. I ask her questions. I say, what do you think about adding this story or that story? So we hash out all six and then we pick a day soon after while it's fresh in my mind and I come into the studio, which I'm doing today. Now there's some wiggle room here because there's some interviews I need to do. Like yesterday I did one with James Wedmore. Next week I'll do one with Michael Hyatt. These are people that are coming on the show soon. So I've got to make some space for those interviews, but I love the fact that we are going to get these done. And then here's like the magic moment of batching that again, we all know this, but I just want to share it from my experience. I'm looking forward to a full month where I'm not working on the podcast because when I come back for the next batching session, imagine how excited I am going to be to work on the content and how fresh I'm going to be and just really energized. So if anyone is struggling, if you are struggling with batching of anything in your business, rethink it and just know that I've struggled with it from the get-go. This is the first time it feels really really good. So there you have it. So it's a big step for me. I've talked about batching before. I said that we were on track and we weren't. So I will keep you updated. I promise. But this is the first time that I'm like, um, I think we found our groove. I think we've got this batching thing down. Okay. So moving on to step two, if step one is all about developing the content, step two is all about recording and editing. So first the prep. So after the questions and the outlines are done, whether questions for interviews or just outlines for me, I will take at least a few hours to go over my notes. And that's what I talked about in the second batching meeting with Gina. We sit down and we kind of dive into those outlines just to make sure that they're in my voice and they are valuable enough. Again, I just don't want to waste your time. So I really spend some time making sure this is really, really good. And here's something cool we just started to do. With each episode, as I'm reviewing the outline, Gina and I decide what is the main question we're answering for each of the podcast episodes. So for this one, the question is, Amy, what is your process for producing a podcast from start to finish? That is the question we're answering. But some of the other episodes, we kind of struggled with it and we thought, well, then we're off a little bit here. If it's not clear, the question we are answering with this podcast, let's go back to the drawing board and make sure it is clear. So that's one thing we do when we go over the outlines. Now for recording, I record in my video studio now. So for all of you who follow me on Instagram, you know, I have a new video studio that also acts as my podcast studio. So I've got some soundproofing on the walls, some carpet on the floor, and I have a really, really easy podcasting setup. So in the show notes, I made a quick little video on my iPhone of all the equipment I use for my podcast, the microphone, the software, the mixer box, and it's way simpler than you might think because I used to use a big fat mixer. I mean, the thing took up half the desk and I made it way more complicated than I needed it to be. But quite honestly, maybe a few years back, you had to do it that way. I don't know. I don't know technology that well, but Pat Flynn helped me out with a new setup that I absolutely love. So I'll make a quick little video of that, put it on the show notes at amyporterfield.com forward slash 176. For each episode I record, it takes me about an hour. So if it's going to be maybe even a little bit longer, let's say this was going to be a 45 minute episode. I usually stop and kind of look at my notes and think about things here and there while I'm recording since I'm not reading a script. So if I mess up, I pause and then let my editor pick up where I messed up. She's probably going to think that was a mistake, but I was just showing you guys. So if I really want her to fix something, I just pause and it's very obvious. 
I don't tend to say um or like or those words a lot, so I don't have to worry about that. So the editing really is if I just messed up and it didn't make sense, then my editor will clean that up. So let's move into editing. So that's the next step. I use Pro Podcast Solutions. This business was created by a guy named Daryl. I love him. He's always been fantastic to work with. Recently, I think his business has gotten bigger, so he's brought in a few extra people to edit my podcast. They've been doing a stellar job, and I love them so much because they even get into our Asana project plan and allow us to assign the podcast in there, put any edit notes that I might have, and they really just work nicely within our team. So I'll link to them in the show notes if you want to check out my editor, incredibly affordable and fantastic to work with. So after I record an episode and if I have any editing notes, I put them into Asana for Daryl's team to check out. Again, no heavy editing, just cleaning up some mistakes and missteps along the way. And then we're good to go. And the episode gets edited pretty dang quickly. From there, we move into episode title and the freebie title. Now, I'm going to talk about the freebie a little bit later in another category here, But the episode title is important. This is one area that I'm trying to improve in, in terms of making sure that it is incredibly descriptive and it speaks to exactly what you're looking for and when appropriate, uses keywords that are good for SEO. So episode title, we really do spend some time on that, making sure it's good. And then also we think of the freebie title at this point too, since we're working on titles. Not every episode I do has a freebie, but if it does, that's where we work it out. And it's important that we work out our titles early on because we create some images for those titles to put in emails and in the show notes. And so Lindsay can be working on those while we're working on everything else. So that's why it kind of lands here in my project plan. Now, moving on to step three. So just to make sure you're following along, step one, develop the content. I have my notes in front of me. Step two, record and edit. Step three is the copy. So while the file is being edited, I send the raw files to my writer to get the copy going. So here's what we do in terms of copy. We have an email. So you could call it your weekly newsletter, but every Thursday we send out an email to my entire email list talking about the podcast episode and why it's so important that you take a listen. Now, if you're on my email list and you're not receiving my weekly Thursday emails, one of the reasons why that might be happening is because you're in a current funnel with me. You all know about email segmentation, right? So we can segment our email list. And if you are currently in a funnel where you're getting invites to a special webinar I'm doing, or you actually are watching the webinar, now you're getting the promo emails. If you're in any one of my three funnels for either List Builders Lab, courses that convert, or webinars that convert, you have a tag inside Infusionsoft, which is my email service provider, that says DND, which means do not disturb. And Devin, my partner in business, he's really good with creating funnels and creating them in a way to exclude people that shouldn't get certain emails and then put them back into the funnel when they're done or put them back into the weekly emails when they're done with a special promo funnel that we put them in. And so if you're done with, let's say, the webinars that convert webinar, you already got all the promo emails you bought or you didn't buy, it doesn't matter. After maybe a week or so, you get put back into the general email where you're going to start to get my weekly emails again. That way we don't send you too many emails while you're in a funnel. Good? Okay. So the email we send every week, that's part of the copy that is going to get written. And in that email, we are focusing on getting the right hook in there, meaning we want to convey the incredible value of the podcast and what's in it for the listener. So we spend some quality time on that email. The next piece of copy is show notes. And this is a piece that I think has undergone the biggest transformation in my business. A few years ago, we would write out full in-depth pieces on our blog around the show notes. But then I started to think, well, if I include everything in the show notes, who's going to ever listen to the podcast episode? So I scaled that back and made them shorter, maybe a little snappier. And then I thought, I still feel like 
I'm missing something. I haven't always loved our show notes. And I don't actually believe after getting educated about this from some of my peers that detailed show notes means people aren't going to listen to the episode. Some people just love to listen to the episode, so they'll listen regardless. Other people, they might not be podcast listeners, but they get great value from the show notes. So I think it's a preference thing in terms of you, the podcaster, how you want to do it. But here's the deal. What we're going to be testing out over the next few months is two different types of show notes. One week, we might do really detailed show notes. We'll include some images, some video, and we might even actually do that just like once a month because, you know, resources are limited. We're working on other stuff as well as producing this podcast. So we might do once a month some really detailed show notes. And then the other episodes, we're going to just have a few takeaways at the top. So that's something new. Every show note, it's going to include the top three to five takeaways from this podcast episode. So right away, you can look at the takeaways and think, okay, is this an episode I want to listen to or not? And then from there, we'll do some kind of intro paragraph. And then from there, we're just doing bullet points. And we're basically spelling out the key lessons in this episode. You'll learn this, you'll learn that. Amy will talk about this. And we're putting timestamps where those bullet points are. And I'm really excited about this because that means that you can come to my show notes and you can look at the timestamps and think, you know what? I don't have tons of time, but I really want to hear her talk about that. So you can download my episode, listen to it, and just forward to the areas that you want. Now, I hope you'll listen to the entire episode, but sometimes you just got to get to the stuff you need. And that's why we're including timestamps as well. So I'm excited for this new transformation of my show notes. And as we do it for a few months, you know, I always like to go first and then tell you how it went. So I'll report back on my views of our show notes. Okay, moving on to the third piece of copy, the freebie. Now, we do not do a freebie for every single episode, but right now we're trying to do a freebie a month at least. But really, instead of saying once a month we're going to do a freebie for one of the episodes, we ask ourselves, does this episode need a freebie? So right now, of course, this episode has a freebie. It's the whole podcast project plan. Again, amyporterfield.com forward slash 176 download will take you right there. But then maybe when I record the next episode, I come up with a great freebie idea and we'll do one for that as well, but we don't force it. So here's my criteria for deciding if we're going to add a freebie to a podcast episode. Number one, does the episode need a companion piece to help my listeners implement what I'm teaching them? For example, if I'm doing a workshop on my podcast episode, could my listener use a worksheet to go with it? Or maybe they need a swipe file example so I could show them exactly how I've done it in my business. If the answer is yes, then boom, I've got a freebie for that episode. Here's another question I asked. Does it bring the topic a step forward? So I don't want to just regurgitate the episode in the freebie. That's a big one for me. So my freebie should never just be practically like a transcript of what I just taught in the episode. Instead, it has to take things forward. So in the example of the freebie for today, yes, the freebie is going to cover everything I'm telling you here, but it's also going to call out the essential pieces that you want to do no matter where you are in your journey. And it's also going to add extra value that I don't even mention here, things that we just don't have time to get into, but I want you to know. So moving it forward. And then also, does the episode need a visual? So for example, for my Facebook episode on what's trending now, the examples of engagement on Facebook and videos on Facebook, that was perfect to put into a freebie. So if you want to see this in action, grab the freebie. So that's another great criteria if you should include a freebie, so some kind of lead magnet with your podcast episode. As I mentioned, you don't want to force a freebie either. So there have been a few episodes where I thought I really want a freebie for this. And then after a few rounds of not coming up with any good ideas for a freebie, we just nixed it. So don't force it because I'll tell you right now, freebies add a few extra steps to say the least to your podcast process plan. So when you get the freebie, my freebie from today's episode, you'll see that if you include some kind of lead magnet, 
there's a lot of steps involved. So maybe just start out with doing one a month. I think that's a great way to ease yourself into it. And you can keep your freebies simple. As long as they're value packed and they will make an impact with your audience, you can do a PDF, a cheat sheet, a checklist, a swipe file, whatever works for you. But I don't want you to spend hours and hours on these freebies. One thing that makes it really easy for me, and I think I'll mention this a little later as well, is that we have a template for our freebies because all of our freebies are essentially PDFs. So we have a look and feel for every freebie. So if you have like five of my freebies right now, since I rebranded my website, they all look exactly the same. They're just different content. That makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, moving on to the fourth section of copy, social media. And for a long time, My writer would write the Facebook post, the Twitter post, and sometimes an Instagram post. But I'm actually experimenting. So I love this episode because I get to share with you what we've done for a long time and then what we're playing with right now because you always got to mix things up or it gets boring, right? So I thought that I would start to record short little videos for social media when a new episode comes out. So you're going to see me starting to do this fairly soon because remember I said with the show notes at the very top, we're going to start out with a few takeaways. And so what I thought I would do since they'll already, they'll already be written, I'm going to get on my iPhone. So nothing professional and just say, Hey guys, I have a brand new episode and let me give you a few takeaways just to see if this is an episode you'd like to dive into. So you're going to learn this, this, and that. I can't wait for you to check it out. The episode is called this. It's number this and there done. So it was just a quick little video that I could use for Instagram, I could use on Twitter, and I could use on Facebook. And then likely I'll do an Insta story as well. Now here's a little secret with me and social media. If I don't have a plan, if it's not on my calendar, if I don't have kind of like a template of how I'm going to do something, I'm not consistent with it. So with Insta stories, sometimes I would jump on Instagram and do a quick story, you know, a video about the episode. Sometimes I wouldn't. But now we kind of have a little plan. So every Thursday morning when a new episode comes out, I know that I'm going to jump on. I know how I want to talk about it. It could still be off the cuff and never really polished, but at least I have it in my calendar like, ooh, this morning I need to jump on Instagram because I want to talk about the latest episode. So that helps me. Maybe it could help you as well. Now, beyond social media, there's a few other areas of copy that we pay attention to. One, if we have a freebie, we need a little blurb about the freebie for the pop-up box in the show notes. So it might just be a sentence or two, but we use an image that has the title of the freebie and maybe one sentence as to what it's about. And then you click the button and a pop-up box appears and that's lead boxes. So we use lead boxes for all of our freebie pop-up boxes on our website. So we need a little blurb for that. And then push crew. Have you guys heard of push crew? I'm going to talk about it in an upcoming episode when I talk about list building and some of my favorite tools. But push crew is a little blurb that pops up in the upper right hand corner of your browser or even on your desktop to alert you that something new is on a website. So this is something that you actually need to agree to. So when you come to my website, if you've ever agreed to a push crew message, every time I have a new podcast episode, no matter where you are on the web or what you're doing on your computer, as long as you're connected to the web, a little box will pop up in the right corner saying, hey, I've got a new episode. This is what it's about. I love push crew. And then another tool we're using is a messenger bot. So if you come to my Facebook page and you want to leave a message, you will actually get a message from me that says, hey, since you're here, I have a brand new episode out about XYZ. So click here to check it out. So we're using messenger bots directly on our Facebook page to advertise the newest episode as well. One thing I've learned is that you do need to be everywhere where it matters to broadcast or promote, I should say, your podcast episode. But you also don't want to be bogged down with way too many steps. So again, ease into it, Grasshopper. You don't have to do all of this all at once. But because I have a team that can help me, I'm going to do it because I know that it works. Okay, so easing into step four. Again, I like to keep you informed as to where we're at. Step one, develop content. Step two, record and edit. Step three, it's all about the copy we write for the episode. Step four, design and transcript. 
So with everything written, now that we've got the copy of the show notes and the email and all the extras I told you about, it's time for Lindsay to send out images for the design that we need. So for design, we get some images created for social sharing. We have a featured image. And so this is the image that's highlighted on the top of my show notes. So it's that image. If you go to one show note episode, it's that big image at the top. Really simple. We use stock imagery and then we add some text to it, but still we need to get it designed. And then if we have a freebie, all the content needs to be put into the template that I told you about. And then that freebie opt-in box on my show notes needs to be designed. And then an image for the newsletter. And you might be saying, are you insane? I'm not creating that many images for my podcast. But here's the little secret, guys. If you follow my podcast religiously, if you get my weekly emails, you know that it's all templates. It all looks pretty much the same, except that the content's different. And then for each episode, we have a different image. Like, you know, for each blog post, you have a new image at the top. That's the same with us. So we might get 20 images sourced at one time. So we know, okay, for the next 20 images, here's the images we can pull from for each episode. So we like to do things in batches. So we're not starting from scratch ever. So with each episode, it's not like, okay, we're starting from scratch. Here we go. We've got things pretty dialed in. So it gets easier as you go. In the freebie for this episode, the podcast project plan, I list out all of these design elements that we use. So you don't need to take notes. It's in there, but I just kind of wanted to run through exactly what images we use. We also use 99 designs for this. We found one guy. We love him. And I'm scared to even say his name on this episode. You guys know me. I'm like an open book. I share all my stuff with you. But this guy, because we get a lot of downloads per episode, I'm just going to save his name for now because I have mentioned him in all of my paid Facebook groups. So if you're in any of my course, you already know his name, but really you don't even need to know his name. There's some amazing designers at 99 designs. The reason why we use 99 designs and not my regular designer, Jess is because Jess is way more expensive and we don't need expensive design for these podcast elements. So anywhere where we can save money and use a designer, that's not as expensive. And again, a lot of these are templates. Then we are very, very happy campers. And then I've already mentioned this one a few times, but when we have a freebie, it gets written by Gina and then someone on my team will look at it for any edits or typos or anything like that. And then that will go to 99 designs as well. And because earlier in the year, Jess, my main designer created a template for all of our freebies for our podcast, we gave that to our designer at 99 designs and he now just puts the content right in there. So I love that because I know it's going to be fully branded to my own personal brand and it's going to look really, really good. Now, as Lindsay's working on all the design elements, she's also sending out the edited audio to our transcriptionists. We've worked with the same transcriptionist for years, and it's so nice to have these long term relationships because she knocks these transcripts out really quickly. And lately, she's now putting five minute timestamps into the transcript so people can kind of find in the transcript where I've called out certain things in the show notes. Remember, I'm time stamping my bullet points in the show notes as well. So now there's timestamps in the transcript. So that's one thing we've added, but I love to share with you the new stuff we're trying out. So here's something new. We have always put the transcript in a PDF. You can click a link to get it if you want that transcript. So on the show notes, click a link, download the transcript. What we've done is we've actually also now started to load the transcript onto my website. Now, when you click a link to get the transcript, you can go to a web page and all of the copy is on that web page. So we're doing this for SEO purposes. So you can also click a link right at the top of the show notes to get that PDF if you want to save it on your desktop. But it now lives on a standalone web page on my website, all of the transcripts moving forward. So this is something brand new that we're doing, and I cannot wait to try it out again. As I get results, I'll share it with you. 
Moving on to step number five, it's all about loading up the content. So we've got images and copy and the edited podcast file. Everything is now complete and we're loading it up in the appropriate places. So we use a few different pieces of technology for this part. For the email, it all happens in Infusionsoft. So we have a template. See, it's all about the templates. We've got a template inside Infusionsoft. So we load up our email there. But here's one thing I do that maybe a lot of other podcasters don't do if they're working with a team. And I make sure that I get that email emailed to my personal account before we send it out. And the reason for that is I want to see that finished email. Email to me is so incredibly important. It's a huge piece of the promotional puzzle for your podcast. If you have an email list, you want them to know every single week when you have a new podcast episode. This is really important. And because I use my podcast as my weekly consistent content, I've got to make sure that email is good. So I touch it twice. One, it gets written and I review it. Two, it gets put into a template in Infusionsoft sent to me and I look at it one final time. It might take me 10 minutes, but that's not really a big deal, of course, but I just want to be the final eyes on it before it goes out. So it's important to me. So I make time for it. So that's the email. And then, of course, the show notes. This all happens inside of WordPress. So Lindsay will add the content to the WordPress site and she'll add hyperlinks, bullet points, images. And like most websites, whatever you're using, WordPress is most popular. We have a template for all of our show notes. So they all look the same. So Lindsay knows exactly how to load up the content. And another thing Lindsay has to load up is the freebie for the episode if I've got one. So if you are scrolling into the show notes, you will see an image that highlights the freebie. And if you click the button, a pop-up box appears. That's lead boxes through lead pages, one of my favorite tools. And Lindsay has to program that to make it work. It's easy, but it still takes some time. So she sets up a web form. She sets up tags so we know which viewers have signed up for which freebies. So we are very clear if you signed up for the podcast freebie versus if you signed up for a different freebie I have, or if you sign up for all of them. So we have tags to tell us this, which is really, really cool when we do special marketing. So she sets up all of the prep for the lead box that pops up for that freebie. And then she puts the images into the show notes. And if I have any video, like remember, I have a video for this one to show you the podcast equipment I use. She'll program or embed that video into the show notes as well. So that takes her a little while just to get it all good and going. Now, remember, I'm going to do two different kinds of show notes moving forward. When it's really elaborate, lots of images, videos, lots of examples, it's going to take her a little bit longer. But with the new format where I've just got the takeaways at the top, short paragraph, and then the bullets, that won't take her as long. And then maybe I'll add an image or a video depending on if I have something extra to share or if I have a freebie. So there you have it. And the final step, step six, is all about social media. So once the episode has gone live, it's on iTunes. And we actually also put it on Google Play and Stitcher. So once my episodes are live, the email goes out to let my list know that we have a new episode. And then we post on social media. And as I mentioned, this is where... I want to include more videos with takeaways from the episode, and I'll do my Insta story, Facebook video. I'll use video on Twitter, and then sometimes we will do an Instagram post. Now, here's something cool that I didn't mention earlier. Once in a while, we will do an Instagram post that is actually an image with the broadcast waves going through the image. Have you ever seen me do that before? And if you click play, it's not really a video. The only thing moving is those little broadcast waves, but you hear a snippet from the episode. And I've done this a few times. We're bringing it back. We took a break from it to kind of get a new plan together. There are more work than I could even talk about in this episode to make sense. This is more of an advanced strategy. I don't want you doing this if you feel overwhelmed already with your podcast, something to move into. But we'll probably do it for this podcast episode so you see all the examples I talk about here. So on Instagram, you'll likely see an audio post where you hear a snippet and that advertises the episode as well. Good stuff? All right. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. One quick wrap up of the steps. Step one, develop content. Step two, record and edit. 
Step three, copy. Step four, design and transcript. Step five, load it up. Step six, post on social media. No big deal, right? Just a few steps. Yeah, it is a big deal. There's a lot going on here. And when you get the freebie of my podcast project plan, you'll see that I've called out the essentials. So if you're just starting out or you're already overwhelmed with everything you're working on, do not try to tackle every step I do. Ease into the tasks as you have a bigger team and more time to focus on some of the other exciting things you want to do with your podcast. I am so, so glad that you joined me here because hopefully it gave you a glimpse of behind the scenes. And remember, I put a video on the show notes talking about my technology if you want to see that in action as well. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my team members. You all make this possible. I know you do most of the work and I get to just show up, create the content and record the episodes, but there's so much going on behind the scenes. And thank you to each of you. Your hard work and dedication and your flexibility and your great attitudes never, ever go unnoticed. I love you all very, very much. Now, switching gears just a bit, next week's episode is with a returning guest, but this time we're talking about something totally different. It is Mr. Michael Hyatt. And I know many of you love Michael just as much as I do. And I'm excited because next week in episode number 177, we are talking about the ideal week strategy. And it is so good. So I already put together my ideal week before I talked to Michael, but I've been struggling a little bit with implementing it. Now, if you don't know what the ideal week is, it's going to change your life. So show up next week and definitely tune into that episode. But for those of you who know what I'm talking about, we're going to get into some details as to how to go about putting together your ideal week and then actually sticking to it and implementing it, how to have the conversations with your team and your family about how important that ideal week is to you and really how to stay accountable on your own with that ideal week and make sure that it really sticks. It's going to be an awesome episode. I think you are going to love it. So I'll see you here next week and thank you again for tuning in. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 